Okay, uh, it's just about to go 11 o'clock. My name is Matt Crofts. So I head up the Simple Fund 360 team. Today's webinar uh, is going to be hosted by myself and Pablo. Pablo, you should be able to see on screen. Say hi, Pabs. Hi, everyone. Pablo heads up the customer service area and is responsible for all the onboarding and various processes to get you up and running on both CAS and Simple Fund 360. And he's going to step through that sort of process and try to make it easy for those that are interested in looking at Simple Fund 360. So we'll make a start. It's gone 11 o'clock. You should be able to see my screen. Uh, today, what it is about is really an information session to help you, I guess, with the migration process. We're going to go through what resources are available to, uh, to step you through the various stages of onboarding onto 360. I'll go through a couple of practical tips just where Simple Fund 360 and, and those that may be using our desktop solution uh, can get an e easier handle. Uh, and then I'll cover some of the main features and give you some sort of tips and tricks on really how to use those features and those tools. So I'll hand over to Pablo and he's gonna step you through the migration onboarding to start with. Great, thank you, Matt. Hi everyone. So um, one of the things that I wanted to go through and cover today for you is if you are looking at getting started with uh, 360, it's probably just guide you through what the journey would look like for you. So if you are using Simple Fun, um, also, one of the first things that you need to do is just ensure that you have a valid Simple Fund 360 license. You might have had a trial in the past. So just ensure that's activated and you can still log in to your system. Um, obviously, if you need help with that, you know, you can get in contact with your account manager and they can sort that out for you. Now, with step two, we talk about tune in. So what does that mean? So Simple Fund Desktop and Simple Fund 360 are two completely different products. So what we've done is we've come up with a onboarding process for you to help you familiarize yourself with what are the key differences between Simple Fund and Simple Fund 360. So things like the chart of accounts, so processing. So just a couple of different things like that. We also cover uh, your fundamental webinar. So that's also included in there. So we go through the process of, okay, well, I now wanna start with 360. What are the main key features that I should be using for processing, for end of year report, reporting, inviting new users, setting up data feeds, et cetera. So it gives you an overview uh, to help you get started. Uh, we also go through the migration requirements. So if you do have, have any segregated funds or any depreciate, depreciatables assets as well, we cover that for you. So we try and give you as much information before you get started. Now with step three, what we really um, want you to do or we, we need to ensure that is done before we commence is ensure that your funds are finalized as of the 30th of June of that particular financial year. So your fund needs to be finalized, your tax returns sent and audited just to ensure that there's no further changes that are required. And then you can simply migrate the fund through the migration utility in Simple Fund. Now we know that um, a lot of you at the moment are going through uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, workload as well, and sometimes you may not have the resource to do so. So we do have a client success team that can help you with the process as well, that are able to do that entire process for you if you're not able to do so. So you just get in contact with our client success team for that. Now, finally, if you are not using one of our desktop products, you simply, again, make sure you have a valid license, Provide BGL or our client success team with a copy of your financial statements as of the 30th of June, invite our client success team, and then they will set up the funds for you at no additional cost for you either. And you can find more information at the bottom of that page. It would have the onboarding process for you. So now, how do we get started? So, with uh, Simple Fund Desktop, you're probably used to going to the BGL Wiki or maybe just downloading a, a, a manual. Uh, so what we've done with Simple Fund 360 is we've inbuilt a learning channel. So when you access Simple Fund, you'll be able to have access to this free online learning channel that covers 
all of your training for you, as well as some tips and tricks on specific um, aspects of the, of the software, for example, smart matching as well. So you can go through that at your own pace. It is free. You can invite as many users as you like as well, and they complete their course online as well. We also have, as mentioned before, some getting started webinars. So to help you um, establishing your data feeds and things like that, or just get you started with the software. Classroom training is normally also provided. That has currently been switched to a webinar type scenario where you have three professional courses that you can enroll for, and those can be um, accessed and you can register for uh, through our BGL uh, website. Now, we've also done a bit of a revamp with the support functions uh, for Simplify 360 as well. So you'll be used to the BGL Wiki. Currently with the desktop, we've launched a brand new knowledge base center for you um, for 360. So that includes all things of like getting started, knowledge base articles, best practices, um, videos, and you can also download all your training PDFs. So it's a very uh, comprehensive knowledge center there. What we've done as well is we've inbuilt a live chat function straight into the software. So between your nine to five hours, if you get stuck, have a quick question that you want to raise with our support team, rather than emailing or waiting for someone to give you a call back, click on the live chat channel. They'll be able to get back to you within about 45 seconds and you'll be able to chat with them um, very rapidly. We still have your email support. So if you have anything that's more of a technical query, it may take a bit more time uh, for the agents to actually review that. Just send through an email as you normally do. Uh, phone support is always available for you. So if you're having problems logging in for any reason, you've forgotten your password, anything like that, get in contact with us, we will help you through that. And finally, we've developed also the BGL community, which allows you to connect with like-minded uh, users um, for anything that you want to have a discussion about, how to process a complex corporate action or anything like that, you'll be able to engage with other users, our power users in there, or also be able to get responses from the product team or specialists from BGL. So what we're gonna do now is just go through and show you how to access support within Simple Find 360. So what you'll find is that on the top right corner, there'll be a little phone. Basically type in your question there and click go. It will come back with some article suggestions or community suggestions there. If those don't help, click support. How you'd like to be contacted, email or phone, put in your problem statement, your query, upload any source documents and click submit a support call. So it's a nice quick function for you and it provides you an ID number so that you can quote that if you need to get in contact with us again. You receive an email with some automated answers. Now this is to help you to see if they may resolve the issue. If it does, click yes and your ticket's closed. If not, just say no and basically our consultants will get back to you. The Knowledge Base Center allows you to view all the statuses of your support course as well. So you can see anything there. You can search for past calls, go back, look at anything that's impending or closed, and you'll be able to see who um, is uh, allocated to your ticket, and you will see um, all your support tickets through there as well. So that's the support function. Um, we'll now show you the live chat function of uh, support as well. So again, this has been inbuilt for you from nine to five in, uh, during the day. You can access this channel, type in your query, then click on get in touch, live chat, and then someone will come in here. And then you can just type in your query and a support consultant will come in, take over and help you with your query as well. And it's just as simple as that. If you want a transcript, you can get that sent over to you as well. So nice and easy function that you can access from your um, software without having, again, to contact us um, for support. So finally, so we've gone through how do I get started, but how do I continue to learn? 
So Simple Phone 360 releases uh, new features every month. Um, so we move pretty quickly. So we provide you with monthly update webinars. Now this monthly update webinars will cover obviously any new features that have come through. And this will also be available uh, through the BGL community for you to view at any particular time. We also release um, some key features also. So things like um, smart matching, work papers, automated uh, distributions as well. So things like that, that our main key features we will run a separate webinar as well, just to get, make sure that you get the most out of those. You will also be provided a quarterly report from your account manager, letting you know what are the key functions and features which the Simple Fund 360 team have released. And you can sort of um, review those in case you didn't get a chance to keep up to date with all the monthly changes that happen. Finally, we have uh, BGL and partnership webinars. So for example, Smart SMSF, DocuSign or Cloud Office. So if you want to learn how to use those particular um, services from our partners, we run uh, uh, webinars together so we can show you how to get the most of Simple Fund 360 and our add-on app partners as well. And finally, YouTube channel. So we do put a lot of content into that, all update seminars, key features, um, partnership webinars, all that will be posted on our uh, YouTube channel. Again, you can visit that um, whenever you wish as well. So that is um, the part which I wanted to go through and just letting you know what you can expect from Simple Fund 360 um, when switching over. So I'll hand you over to Matt now who will take over. Thanks, Pabs. Uh, as Pablo has mentioned, it's, it's a lot of the onboarding process. It's very much designed now with over 5,000 clients moving really for, to make it very simple for you to migrate. We've got a lot of resources to ensure that happens, a lot of documentation and really the journey um, is not as difficult as what you expect because there's a lot that's still the same. Um, these are really the top features uh, in Simple Fund 360 that I'm showing you now uh, that really make that sort of difference between desktop and Simple Fund 360. Uh, for those that uh, don't know me, I was product manager for 11 years on Simple Fund desktop. I probably am a little bit rusty now, I've been six years on the cloud uh, and run my own funds on the cloud. So I'm an accountant, SSA. Uh, and these are sort of the, what I want to really make sure is that these features I explained to you and what their purpose is in getting you to really be more productive, uh, remain compliant, which is what we all have to do. Uh, there's a lot of legislation changes coming through at the moment and also help you know, our clients have a good retirement. That's really the nuts and bolts. So these are sort of the main features where it differs. We've, got a, we've still got a general ledger. It's still double entry, um, but we call it a smart general ledger. We've built some machine learning into it, which I'll show you, which is really like having a, a little bit of an assistant bookkeeper. We've got work papers now, accounting work papers. We've got integration with partners, We've got much more data coming through, through our corporate action module, uh, where we're feeding the data in rather than in desktop, you're having to create that data. And then obviously we launched the annual tax statement, uh, similar to desktop, uh, but using the new cloud methods, T-bar management, uh, 350 data feeds, Registry is quite different, so I'll take you a bit through that. And then obviously there's the opportunity to engage your clients through mobile uh, solutions where um, right now those uh, clients are certainly, um, have got access to mobile, are certainly looking at the markets fairly frequently. The benefits that come with those features is really, you know, I'd probably sum these all up at the moment is really the digital part of cloud, really the sharing uh, of the information, having it in the cloud, uh, really, I think it's pretty much proven now that you get improved reliability, uh, you have less IT uh, internal resources having to worry about security, that's 
our responsibility in joint partnership with Amazon where we host it. Um, and certainly, you know, the idea and the benefits is that you can really spend more time on more productive feature sets. Um, so they're really the benefits and hopefully you'll see those come through. As I mentioned, uh, I really started on desktop software and even before that, yes, I am old, on Excel spreadsheets for self-managed super funds uh, in their infancy. And this is really um, a slide that shows the sort of three S curves I've seen over that uh, 20, 25 year period uh, in technology. And what you'll see here is certainly desktop, file-based feeds, we added bank link uh, in the early days and it was one of the first feeds and most productive feeds that we added. Uh, but then what happened is cloud came along and really the automation, the feed became BGL's responsibility. So we maintain and make sure that you don't have to load those feeds. So the, the big point of difference, which I'll talk about is the feeds are getting loaded by us and they're getting processed by us. Um, so it's sort of like you got this automated bookkeeper there helping you and I'll show you a bit of that. And then the new wave that's really just uh, coming upon us um, and you'll probably see more of this uh, is robotic process automation. You'll hear it referred to as machine learning or AI, but really what it is is a set of algorithms, mathematics effectively, where we're looking at the data to drive new efficiencies. And that's really on top of the existing efficiencies on cloud. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. This came from uh, a client using 360 and I thought it was very adept to start this and help you, I guess, is data awareness is the key to 360. You need to set up the feeds. Uh, we've got a dedicated team, we've actually got two dedicated teams, a connected service team that manages all the feeds in the back end and a data service team that helps set up the feeds and can help you set up the feeds and get started. You can set up a lot of the, some of the feeds, the BGL feeds in desktop before you migrate. Um, but you certainly want to have that data awareness from day one. Um, it's probably the biggest tip. If you get one thing out of this webinar, it's the feeds are working 24 seven. So the feed for a typical fund like mine gets a CBA feed overnight uh, from in my case, ComBank and ComSec, those feeds come in and they start matching without you needing to touch anything. You don't need to click a button. You don't need to basically go in. We have rules in place from day one to start matching it. And our machine learning starts matching it as well in the background. So that trust in data is ever increasing. It's taken really 20 years from our first sort of feeds, bank link that require you to drive it to more where we are now, where we're driving it. And we're starting to see some high growth firms and certainly I think that's the opportunities in front of us. And we're certainly seeing machine learning as I've mentioned in the early stages. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's gonna do all your work. Um, it's really in its early stages and I'll show you uh, practically what that means when I say in early stages. So the first thing is setting up your feeds. Now, because it's so important, we've actually rewritten our bank feed or our feed management screen just recently. It was um, six years ago that 360 launched. We've got over 5,000 clients using it now, but a lot of it is managing the feed. So I'll jump you in here and just show you how things have transitioned. We've got a dedicated connect menu where we've got all the feeds sitting here um, from lodgements to connections to ordering documents. And this was our existing feed management screen. You may have seen it or may not have seen it where we grouped into three different batches. What we've done is try to make that even easier now to manage your feeds and see how many feed packs you've got remaining here you can see here how many licenses you've got. So you've got the choice um, to turn on a feed for a particular fund. But my advice, 
And I mean in the most helpful way possible is you should set up every fund you've got with bank feeds. You only pay for the fund, you don't pay for the actual bank feed. So you can have a fund uh, like my particular fund that's got five bank feeds and you're only paying the $40 uh, for that fund. But what it's about is setting up these feeds and managing these feeds. We've put a lot of extra work into seeing what's operating. Maybe a feed has stopped. Um, if you want to just hone into the fund, you can see this particular fund has got a share pack and it's linked to registry and it's linked to all these different bank feeds. And one here is I may have set up this fund two years ago. And in that particular case, maybe this ANZ account, the banks are a little bit funny, wasn't supported. But now we've worked with ANZ, you know, we've been working with all the banks uh, for six years now. I can now set that up so I can have that filter and see across all my banks what's actually supported now. Because right? that's what we call about data awareness. So you can see here all these bank accounts have basically now supported by our bank service. So I can set those up, all right, they've already got their BSP account numbers in, set it up, print the form, and send that through to BGL, to our dedicated team that processes that for you. If there's any issues with the form, they'll be contacting you, but it's, it's pretty much seamless these days to getting those done. Um, and you can manage and see what's operating. You know, we've got this new attention filter. If you happen to have put the account details in or the account's not supported as yet. So lots of filters. You can export that whole view out um, into an Excel spreadsheet and give to someone in the office to basically follow up feeds uh, that may not uh, have been available before. So that's really about feed management there. Um, and getting started, it's really the number one thing to have the feeds really get the benefit. You can still do manual data entry, but you won't get that really autonomous part of 360, which is really just um, a, a time saver. So be aware, you can watch, once you've got uh, these feeds set up, you can watch for bank transfers to see whether the client's setting up new bank accounts. And it's, it's certainly advisable to have a process when a new client walks in the door to have the forms ready uh, in front of them when they're signing their engagement letter. So the secret really, the secret source to 360 is we've really become number one in the space because we've spent so much time generating digital data. All right, so we're not relying on the client data. Um, so, the, the challenge, I guess, with, with COVID facing us all at the moment is the clients are quite busy with their own businesses. They, uh, from hearing, speaking to clients, they're not getting the data from their clients because they're busy with other things. So that's really the secret behind 360 is we get a lot of this data from other sources. Um, we get corporate action data, we get dividend data, we get now if you haven't seen 360 for a while, we get tax statement data, so the distribution tax data. We're basically getting that data and putting it into 360. I'll show you a bit of that. Registry, we're connecting to the three different registries. We're getting foreign conversion data. So if you've got any clients exploring, you know, that's great, um, not advice, but uh, US dollar is certainly Australian dollar. Um, you know, there's probably more clients that might be parking their money um, in a US bank account at the moment. So we can convert that. I'll show you a little bit about that. A lot of international pricing, it's included in the price. All of these feeds are included in the price. The only additional one is the bank and the registry. Uh, and uh, we've got these real algorithms that I'll show you about uh, built into the software. And most recently, I'll talk a little bit about accounting work papers Probably don't have enough time to go into T-Bar today. So this is the machine learning part where what I'm talking about is if you give it data, it becomes a new version that's augmenting your existing accountants and bookkeepers. So it augments your existing functions. And what do I mean by that? I'll show you. 
So we'll jump into the software and we'll go to our first screen, which is fun workflow. So when you're in this screen, just a couple of quick tips. It's very easy to find and navigate your way around 360. If you ever get stuck, go up to the top menu here and let's say you want to learn about uh, COVID changes. All right. I can just type COVID in here and it will show me the articles in the help file. Okay. If I want to learn about the smart matching, which I'm just about to show you, I type smart in here. All right. So I don't even have to learn the navigation. I can just go smart matching. That's a quick link. Hit enter and I'm jumping into our smart matching. If I wanted to learn how to use the screen, I could type smart matching and you would have seen there's various information there on the smart matching. All right, so what I wanted to show you here was just, I guess, how the feeds work. We've got some transactions that are already come in. So imagine I'm going to do my year end processing. A lot of the transactions are already matched. All right. Transaction list, a lot of the desktop clients would be familiar. That's where they spend a lot of their time in the transaction list. All these transactions have already been coded. I come into smart matching. It's dealing with the uncoded. All right, what the desktop clients would know as suspense entries. You know, everything sort of when you load a feed or if you're doing manual data entry, you might be just coding it to suspense and coming back through. Here is just swapping between the bank accounts. What I'm going to do now is just post some data in, okay, that I've got in Excel format. Now imagine this data is international data, okay? So imagine it's from my Comtech International account. What I want to do is convert that from US dollars into Australian. So this is where this data built into 360 is really going to save me a heap of time. In desktop, I would need to code each one of these or put it into Excel spreadsheet. Here, I'm just going to code them in and basically convert them into the system. Um, it is giving me a bit of a warning. It's after today's date. Um, I could clear any invalid entries if I wish to. Um, I'm doing a bit of future accounting here. So let's just clear those ones. And then create. That data is then going to be coded in desktop world. It would all sort of look like this suspense entry. You then have to do the work. In smart matching world, we use the algorithms, which are, you know, the buzzword is AI, but it's really just an algorithm that's been taught how to figure out by looking at amounts, descriptions, dates, what the likely transaction is. So it can interpret what Click Super means. Click Super is a contribution provider. Now we do have SuperStream and it would automatically code any SuperStream transactions but this might be a spouse that hasn't been registered for SuperStream. So what the software comes along and basically suggests all these different transactions. And what I can do is then multiple match these. So the batching and just, so, okay, AI suggested this, happy with that, let's get rid of those. I still need to review a, four, a few. The ones where it's not quite smart enough uh, to process is in with knowing which member account. It doesn't have the full SuperStream data in this particular case. If it did, it could code it. Um, but in this case, I just need to choose the member. Now I could turn that into an automatic rule down the bottom here, create a custom rule, and it would automatically code that if I want. Or I can just leave it as a rule that I want to review. So that's really where we're augmenting and you've got sort of like this automated bookkeeper helping you process the transactions. So when you combine that with your bank feeds, with the machine learning, with the rules, that's where you get your daily processing or your monthly processing much more efficient. And you can get a lower level staff member to really do more processing. All right. It's quite clever. It can figure out units. It can figure out a lot of different information. Um, 
that you can not really see anywhere in the life. Here it can just see the word div uh, and uh, it can automatically start suggesting that as a dividend. Uh, a lot of the dividends get processed automatically, but this is where you may just have a banking transaction uh, that doesn't really display much information. So that's really our core screen um, and really the, one of the big efficiency drivers in 360, you can see there I've converted from Australian to US quite quickly and coded a lot of transactions in batches. So the next one is once you've got your data in there, 360 is really designed to manage that data a lot better. So what I'm going to show you here, if, you, if, if you're new to 360, you may not be aware of this. So it's just a few quick tips of these dashboards that are available in the software that help you just sort of review the fund. Uh, we've got a contribution, we've got an investment uh, very detailed investment reporting. Uh, if you've got financial planners in the office, you'd certainly want to show them some of this. Uh, we've got the fund dashboard and we've got some sort of ability to estimate the members position um, daily so you can do checks like, you know, have they got enough money to withdraw at the moment uh, for 10K out of a particular, you know, child's account or something like that you can see that member position is much more updated in the background. We run sort of a semi-automated create entries every night for any transactions that have been loaded that day. So we're updating the members balances continuously in the background. So that enables us to have these dashboards in play here. So these dashboards, I'll show you live. Um, once you sort of set up those feeds, back on the home page, you can access it from there, or you've got this bit of shortcut here. This is um, where whatever screen you're in. So if I happen to be in smart matching, right, where I was before, I can put this overlay in and see a trial balance, right? of any transactions that I've already coded. Okay, so if I go in here, I can see all the contribution information and go straight to that transaction if I click on it. All right, so it's really handy to get that additional information, like whether it's an employer or concessional, you might wanna review that and then just jump back into smart matching. But you can also access all your data, which is what we call our insights dashboard. So this is quite handy. Just recently, our 360 clients, there was a change to the minimum pension. So this is just what I want to show you. If you're new to 360 or if you haven't seen 360, you've got this view here and you can basically just quickly get a snapshot. You can minimize that view um, of all your minimum pensions. So here I can see in 2020 who's hit their minimum and who's not hit their minimum. So if I click that, it gives me this information here and it says, okay, these two have met their minimum. I can then click this little option here and I've got this very quick and handy dashboard of what their drawdowns are. So I've got a bank feed on this so I know it's fairly up to date and the machine learning's helped its code a lot of the minimum pensions, so they've met their minimum. And it's doing anything that may be unallocated, so maybe it's still just sitting in a suspense account, it hasn't been allocated to the member, you can see unallocated there as well. All right, so that's quite handy to be able to review. And then anyone that hasn't met their minimum, you could then do a quick review of those as well. You can see them all here and download those to Excel. All right, so if I click this option, it'll run an Excel report. And it's just hidden from me at the moment, two six. If I can get that up. 
Yeah, it doesn't want to come up. Just believe me, it's got a pension minimum there um, that shows in Excel format all that data that I'm seeing on screen. I can then do a mail merge with that and have all that information into a letter or an email out to clients. So those are the dashboards that we've got built in. And we're continually adding to those so you can manage your workflow, you can manage things like um, lodgement history. There's a lot of information, what financial year the funds are in. All right, you can click those, these filters are editable. I might wanna see, okay, how many financial years have I got with uh, pension funds? Or lodgement statuses. So I can combine these filters you know, with what's been validated, what's been lodged. All right, and I just want to see the pension funds. Okay, so now I've got that, I can export that to Excel just to get my workflow. You can also put things like quick labels in and just label a fund at any point in time. Okay, and you can also basically add new funds here at any point in time through our wizard. So they're the dashboards. There's a lot of information there. You can track things like T-bar, uh, lodgement histories, uh, concessional, non-concessional, a lot of different information that's available. The digital work papers is really timely. This has only been available in 360 for uh, included in the base price, right? There's no additional charge for accounting work papers here. And this is what clients are telling us. Um, only been out three months, we're continuing to add features on it, but really what it helps, certainly when we're all in lockdown, is having all the documents and all the reconciliations all shared in the cloud. So you can have all the information there stored, do your work papers, share it with your auditor, um, and see the workflow as well. Uh, a lot of the surveys that I see um, that people are running 360 have generally got their data processing, which I've shown you is quite efficient now, down from about six to seven hours on average. It's mostly their work papers, preparation, reconciliation, you know, ensuring that they've got all the various documents for the auditor that's taking that four to five hours. So that's why we're tackling that um, aspect in 360 now and making sure that we're adding time saving there. Now, I'm a little bit rusty on desktop, but from my understanding, there's really no uh, additional document features apart from the very basics that were there five years ago. Um, there is audit work papers, but what we're talking about here is accounting work papers. So I'll show you the main thing that you can get out of here is really digital. Um, digital, I think we hear it a lot at the moment while we're all in lockdown, but it's really not having to go to paper. Having all that information digitally at your fingertips and having it stored in there so everyone can access it. So you can track it, you've got checklists, you can put your source documents there, you can export it if you've got a client that you don't want to, you know, a, a, an external auditor that maybe you don't want to give them access to the work papers, you can just export all the word all the work papers and all the source documents together. Or if you're a bit more savvy and your audit is a bit more savvy, you can invite them to have a look at all that documentation. So I'll give you a quick demo of that now. As I said, it's fairly new and it's really getting some great feedback. So I can just go into this compliance area and go into the work papers. What sorry, into the uh, reports work papers. And here, it's basically as soon as I go into the screen, it knows I'm in the 2020 year and it's generating any changes that I may have made. So I loaded some transactions before, okay? So it's clever enough to basically rerun some of those reports because I was in here earlier and it's come in and said, Matt, you need to rework this distribution because I coded a few distributions, all right? So I can see here who's working on this, all right? I can bulk update any of these work papers. So I can change their status to in progress, bang, like that. 
right. I can see down at the bottom here, I've got my permanent docs, my financial statements, my permanent docs. I can load any other docs here. So permanent docs roll forward. Uh, you can put things like your ASIC documents here. So I can add additional checklists if I want specific checklists. Uh, add that. I can put notes here. So this is what I talk about with digital. You know, I can, you know, there's someone that's working remotely and, you know, I don't want to email them. I can just put a note in here, note loaded, uh, you know, contract of sale. Matt, please check or order to please check and add that note. All right, so I can do everything digitally. I can regenerate reports, attach documents here. All right, it will automatically add these reports. Um, you know, I can change who's reporting on this. I can jump back to distribution received, right? If I look at that note, here I can tick off each individual item if I want to do it that way, or I can do it in bulk. But it's also run the report in the background. So that was that little progress bar. And that's the report. I can preview that here digitally, okay, and have that report. So, you know, if you'd probably know in desktop for the desktop clients, the report is a distribution reconciliation report. Um, you need to run it just to reconcile all your tax statements. Well, this was automatically attached and run. And if I go and change a transaction, it will automatically rework that transaction. So at that point in time, and then it knows to redo. So just think of all those little one minute times where you're rerunning reports or you might be attaching those uh, into your Excel spreadsheet. This is doing a lot of that automation work for you. You can attach a document to a specific um, uh, information there. Uh, while I'm talking about distributions, what we have got here is the ability to uh, reconcile to our tax statement as well. So what do I mean by that? We've now got this reconciliation screen where we've got various bits of tax data over 200, most of the most common distribution statements where we populate that data in for you and show you the tax data. So we can generate that tax data and we can also upload the document here. So this is what we call our distribution tax automation. All right, so this is where we're giving you information on the tax data and you can edit that information here. I've already run the create entries on here, but I can see any opening balance reconciliations, any receivable balances here. Um, it really saves me a lot of time and I can get it to populate uh, the amounts um, automatically from 2020, we haven't done yet, but uh, we're working on that as we speak. But 2019, we can populate a lot of that tax data for you. If we haven't got the data, you can put it in once here and have that data saved across all your entities. So big time savings there in the reconciliation, whether we're giving you the data or whether you're putting the data in yourself, if it might be a boutique trust that we haven't been able to get the data for, or send us your boutique trust and we'll calculate some of the data. So this is really saving a lot of time reconciling your distributions. And I know I've got one fund that's got about, you know, 14 distributions, and that's really saved a lot of time, this new screen being able to reconcile it without necessarily needing to run a report, come back to the transaction screen. I can edit all that data directly in this screen called the distribution tax automation. All right. All right, so that's accounting work papers and some of the, some of the tools that are available in 360. Um, and then you can export. So you can export the whole set of work papers. I might just show you that in the report screen in work papers. I can export that whole batch of documents, including any documents that I've attached. 
So any schedules, any documents, um, and it will generate a whole PDF. So if you've got a document management solution, if you're sitting here and saying, Matt, I've got my own document management solution, uh, fine, just use our work papers to generate your check boxes, have that automation, and then just dump your accounting work papers into your document management solution. So the whole document and any attachments, you know, you've got all the permanent docs in here, it can all be dumped, okay, into your document management solution. Huge time saving there. Okay, we've just got a quick question. I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Look, when can 360 give us a heads up on the annual tax statement? Um, well, generally, we start, we've already started on a tax time 2020. So we're looking to get the tax return first out. So what I'm talking about there is the annual return for an SMSF. So we're looking to get that out sort of mid to late May. Um, we're working on that as we speak. The actual distribution statements, the tax statements there, which I think the question is more related to, we'll start seeing those as soon as um, they start getting published. So around about July, mid-July, we start seeing them. Uh, we start seeing those populated through. If you get a tax statement and you want us to code it in, you can email it to us and we can code it in for you. Um, but yeah, normally that same, you know, we, we get a few a bit earlier because we can go to their websites and get the data um, a little bit earlier than the mailed out tax statements, but some that only send out PDFs and don't put it on their websites, it's, it's generally about the same time. Uh, we are looking to put notifications in when the tax data becomes available um, into that sort of workflow screen. So that sort of answers that question. So we'll jump out of here. So that's really the work papers. The other real feature inside 360 that you want to get some awareness on um, when you're first starting out with 360 is the huge range of feeds available. Okay, there's now over 350 feeds. When we launched 360 six years ago, there was 22 feeds, okay? That shows the amount of effort that we've focused on getting more and more data in. And what we also include in that is integration. So we've now, you'll see here with actuary certificates, right? We've now got eight actuaries you can choose from in 360. Now that is an additional charge, but unlike desktop, we don't lock the price. You can negotiate what your actuary price is and we automate all the population of the form, but you choose and you can set the price if you're doing 2000 funds, you might be able to negotiate a very good price with one of those actuaries. All we're involved is sending the data to them. So that's the integration that's available. Haven't got time to go through it, but there's a dedicated screen for actuaries, does all the calcs, um, sends all the documents and loads them into work papers as well. The one I will show you is a little bit about how much easier it is to connect your data in the cloud environment. And anyone that's used Xero or QuickBooks has probably seen what the, what's known as an API connection or a connection page. So I'll show you that live. And what we've done recently, this is where all our connections are, all right? And Superstream's in there, that's included in the price as a connection. But you can now order your documents, okay? So you can connect to the various providers and basically ensure that your data that you share with them is provided under your control. So you need to basically confirm that if you click this authorised button, that they can share with yours the fund list, some of the reports, the contact details is mostly what they're after, and your user details. So I click authorise. And this is the beauty of the cloud. Now I'm connected to, in this case, Smarter SMSF. But we support over 10 different document providers. This one I'm going from 360 into Smarter SMSF. But the others, the other nine, you can go the other way. You connect, same method,
but it's very simple. It's using your username and password to connect to them. And then you can start ordering documents. All right, so you can start doing pension commencements directly from the software. You can view the sample documents from there. Okay, and you can order these documents from here. They've just done early release for COVID. This is only just come out in April, all right? We've got all the COVID support. We've done all the necessary transactions for early release. We anticipate there's going to be, depending on who numbers you believe, I'm estimating between 50,000 member withdrawals up to 200,000, depending on whether you believe Senator Hume or you believe the ATO, uh, the numbers are changing. But you can have these documents um, and have the information now available um, for that particular COVID early release. All right, there's a couple of questions, but Pablo's answered those, so I'll keep moving. But that's the integration power that's available. We also have integration with Zero to share contact information. We have the ability to export to Zero Tax. We obviously do all our own tax lodgements um, in our own tax compliance screen, but you can export that data as well. That's what the tax return looks like. You can validate it, lodge it, just make sure that, you know, can it do tax returns? Yes. Um, it does all the basics of Simple Fund Desktop. I'm really sort of just trying to give you the core differences so you can sort of get your head around, okay, uh, what's different, what's it going to add value to? But, you know, we populate the tax return very similar. Um, you can jump between the sections of the tax return there as well. So that's integration. I just wanted to give you a quick how easy that is to do. Um, compared to, you know, trying to get your IT to integrate with your desktop solutions, very difficult. Digital signing is the next one that we're getting a lot of feedback. So I wanted to put this in there and just make sure you're aware that with 360, it's got two digital signing solutions. One's called BGL sign and then one that's been there for a while, which is included in the price. And then there's DocuSign. We added DocuSign recently because things have moved a little bit in the last six years. Our BGL sign is sending text messages to your clients, but DocuSign allows your clients to send a little squiggle, okay? This is a study of an accounting firm with about 400 funds um, where they implemented digital signing and they saw over 40% of their digital signing envelopes, envelopes is just, you know, a, a send out of a financial pack, um, you know, in a digital envelope. So you can stack all documents together and have them sent out. And over 40% were returned within 24 hours. So that's huge velocity. That's, you, you may not think that's a time saver. It's really a lot of time saving across the whole office because there's a lot less collating, printing, um, sending envelopes um, across to the post office. Um, documents come back and they're not properly signed and have to go back out again. It's really killing those one percenters because they can't skip um, signatures when they're digital. And the good thing, the, one of the best things I've seen is the ATO has been so responsive of late, I hope it keeps up, but they've put out a digital signing um, FAQ on COVID. So have a look at that. Um, it's on my LinkedIn account if you can't find it on the ATO website. But it's fantastic. The ATO has come and said digital signing of the tax return financials is A-OK, -okay, uh, which is fantastic um, to give us that trust and peace of mind that we can use these solutions with the ATO's approval. So this is just uh, what it looks like at the client's end. Um, I'll just play this quick video. All right, so... I'll jump back a little bit here. So I go into reports pack of 360. I generate the documents. I select the trustees. And we basically have done all the work to mark up those documents. We know where they have to be signed. You've put in the email addresses. We send the document out. The client gets their little squiggle. They get all satisfied. They can't skip anything because they've got to click next. Right? This is the key difference. 
when you control it digitally. Those documents then come back to us. They're stored in our document screen. You can see that they're signed. All right, that's a real time saver. We do all the markup. So we put this little sticker here uh, and, and they can even sign it on their mobile as well. So I've done this on my mobile where I can sign a document. Um, so we're doing that for the member statements, trustee decks, trustee minutes. Um, we're adding, so at the moment we've got DocuSign. We're in the process of adding Adobe Sign. Um, next, so you really have a lot of options there, but DocuSign's already there in the software. So I just wanted to show you that. The next one is a little bit around how you can use 360 to engage with your clients at the moment. I think it's really the challenge for all of us is, you know, sending out paper documents is not really engaging. It's quite difficult when we're not in the office and we've got access to, you know, all the printing tools and binding tools. So really what we're seeing a lot of the 360 clients do is engage with their clients. And I think, look, this surveys came from industry funds where they're very focused on engaging with their clients at the moment. Some, I don't want to get political, some may argue misinformation engagement, um, but certainly they're very focused on trying to engage with their clients around the early releases, around getting advice, um, and the reality of the numbers is um, any new entrants, you really need to be engaging with them because um, over 50% of new entrants, sorry, 45% uh, of new entrants into the SMSF space and we'll see whether there's gonna be an increase um, in new establishments. I'm hearing some uh, early figures that, that looks like COVID's generated some more people to start SMSFs. But 45% of them last year in 2019 were under 44. So you're kidding yourself if you're thinking they're not wanting digital tools to be engaged with, especially at the moment. Um, when you look at the overall market, 50% are under age 59. And I know my parents um, are well and truly in their late 70s and engaging with us uh, during mobile, um, you know, over the mobile through various mobile tools. So you can send emails directly out of 360 to uh, get any information, any queries you may have outstanding, or maybe you need a document taken a photo of. You can use what we call our query application that's built into 360. This is what Engage looks like. I'll just run this quick video. This is just an update we did recently for our mobile app. And this is included in 360. There's no extra charge but we updated it for investment reporting because we saw people wanted more detailed reporting. So you can check here, all the investments are revalued daily. I can break down the investments into different categories. And we're seeing huge usage of this, being people engaged to see how their investments are tracking. I might want to compare how their overseas shares are going compared to their Australian shares. So that's what they can do. We also updated this um, to manage the minimum pension changes so that our clients running 360 could have that conversation about what the minimum pension was and explain you know, some of the more complexities around minimums and maximums. So that tool was updated very rapidly and was out there about two weeks after the announcement. So that was really handy to keep those clients engaged. So. It's available on the App Store and it's um, really exciting, I guess, to see uh, how easy it is to set up. I'll just show you quickly. We've got an, probably just another five minutes and I'll open it up to questions. Um, this is where we're heading with 360, right? This is where we're combining the paper world, which has been our challenge, we know you still get some paper from your clients. We know some of the bank statements aren't supported, you know, with some of the smaller credit unions aren't supported. All right, so you're gonna get paper on those. We know you need to convert those papers into real digital data. So this is now in beta with 360 where we're converting using machine learning a paper document 
And our goal is to file this into the work papers. This is where we're at right now. So I'll finish up on this and I'll just show you this video of where the future or really the reality is now. I can go into smart matching where I was in before. I can paste a document, a PDF. It could be a picture as well. We can read an image. So let's imagine this is a credit union and I want to get that data out of, in this case, ANZ. I want this table information. I don't want all this rubbish. Um, so what I can do is get the machine to read that document and have a hard link. Okay, we're robotizing that document and having a hard link between it and skipping all the irrelevant information and storing that in 360. So here it can read, we've got it to now read 60 different types of bank statements. All right, and it will populate the data into that table with extreme accuracy and convert that. Here it's doing an NAB one. All right? And as I click on it, it's actually showing me the transaction in 360. So think about that from your work papers. If you wanted to get your auditor to verita, verify a transaction, it might be a large amount appeared on the bank statement. That's where we're going with this. If you wanted to check the member's name appears on the bank statement and it's not their individual account, that's what we're starting to read and putting that into work papers. Our future with this is trying to read any SMSF document. As we've got 350 feeds already in 360, we've now got 60 types of documents already that can be read. We want to expand it up to 350, 500, 600. All right. So this is right where we are now. This is out with clients in beta mode. All right. If you're a desktop client, it's probably going to take you a little bit of time to onboard, set up your feeds. I can guarantee you this will be out of beta and you'll have this at your fingertips um, to convert over 60 bank statements into real data. And that's quite handy when you're starting with 360 um, to get up and running because sometimes there's a gap between setting up a feed and having the data you know, fed from the date you sign the feed. Not all banks are like that, but the majority are where you, the date you sign the feed is the date you get the data from. So this really helps you get up and running quicker where you can still convert that bank statement data into digital data a lot quicker. So that's really it from me. I've shown you, I guess, what's there. What I've tried to, I haven't been able to show you all the features of 360 that would take me 10 hours. Um, but I've tried to show you the ones that are probably the most helpful, especially uh, around the challenges we're all facing. So I'll open it up to questions. I might get Pablo to come back uh, online. Yep. Um, I'll just unmute him. Um, and we'll just go through a couple of questions. Maybe was there any questions you just want you were answering, Pabs, that you want to sort of touch on that maybe I didn't explain fully? Uh, sure. So, <clears throat> so one of the questions that we had was about about uh, Adobe Sign. So, if we're looking at integrating that with Simple Fine Three Hundred and Sixty, uh, so I did mention that this is something that we are currently working on, uh, and it will be out very soon. Uh, another question was about Simple Ledger. Um, will we move that into the cloud? Um, did say we are currently working on that. Can't give you any dates. Um, <laughs> but the idea behind the correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, is to bring in all the automation as we have with 360 into the simple ledger uh, environment as well. Yeah, spot on. Look, we're working through that at the moment. We're um, just in case competitors are listening in. Uh, we're making some good progress, but yeah, certainly it will be all the same time-saving features, all the bank statement stuff I've shown you, the work papers, uh, all, all the tools that I've shown you today, including the distributions, will be available for trusts and companies. Mostly the focus is on investment. So where we're working at the moment is just all the CGT differences. So that's why I'm not gonna give a date. We've got to go through some complexities, but be aware we did announce it at RegTech uh, last year. 
and we certainly are getting a lot of interest uh, around you know tracking those CGT complexities and corporate actions. Um, so you'll see us definitely move in that space. Mm -hmm. So another question that we also had there was um, about the app that you showed earlier before. So what was the name of that? So it is called Engage by BGL. So if you'd like to download, you can go to your app store for your Google Play or uh, Apple, and then you can download the app there. Uh, as Matt mentioned before, it is definitely a free app that you can download. Use your 360 credentials to log in. And yeah, that's right. You just invite them. Very simple to invite. Uh, you can control... Uh, what they've got access to. So you can give them access to 360 of your game um, or just access to the mobile only app with that login. So very, very much in your control. Um, what other questions? Uh, feel free to, there's a couple of open questions that have just come in. Uh, me and Pabs are gonna hang around probably for a, another five, five minutes. Um, <laughs> I can see Jeffrey Feely just making a pricing comment. Uh, uh, maybe that one's for you, Pabs. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have the, the chats with Ronnie. <laughs> uh, we hear you, Jeff. Uh, we'll say that. Uh, we'll certainly pass that feedback to the CEO. Uh, I saw a question there just on mobile text messages. So our BGL sign, very similar to your internet banking. Have you ever done a bank transfer on some of the bank uh, major banks, it'll ask you, uh, it'll send you a PIN code um, to just verify that transfer. We send out the PDF and the client has to verify themselves by basically typing in their mobile phone number and email address and they get sent a PIN number. So that's called BGL sign. There is some information in the help file so we can send you a link after on that, but it's just called BGL sign. But what we found with that method is the clients, uh, it only just, it's, it secures the PDF and it certainly covers the ATO requirements, but the client experience at the end is probably not as high level as Adobe Sign or DocuSign. Okay, so that's why we've sort of pivoted to have multiple solutions in there, a free solution uh, called BGL Sign um, and I guess DocuSign and soon we'll have Adobe Sign, hopefully that answers that. Integration with QuickBooks, um, not really. You can upload some transactions uh, if you can export your transactions, which I'm, I'm a QuickBook user. I know you can export some transaction details um, out of there. You could paste it into that screen that I've got up there called Smart Matching, our fast data entry screen. It handles three column, four column, um, but you wouldn't want to be coding in QuickBooks. You just use QuickBooks as an uncoded solution um there um and have you know maybe the bank feeds um from quickbooks to have that in there but no real other integration with quickbooks um we're, we're having chats with them um uh, but not a lot of progress at this stage um jeff is mentioning a competitor well i would dispute that jeff uh they were, but they're not, I can tell you. Um, competitor doesn't offer digital signing solution. Um, how to Simple Fund work out the preserved amounts uh, follows the legislation. Uh, there's quite a bit of complexity around preservation components, um, whether you're doing a withdrawal, an early release, or a rollover, uh, 360 handles, all that preservation component. You do need to, when you start a pension account, you do, it does automatically switch everything to unrestricted, non-preserved, um, and also allocates the profit uh, in the correct order for the preservation. The best thing I can tell you, moving from desktop to 360, is you will never, ever have a reconciliation issue um, between the general ledger and the member statement on preservation. Uh, we totally fixed that. So um, hopefully that'll make sense to the desktop client. Sometimes you, you, you get a weird journal or someone's put in some strange journal and moved tax amounts to the wrong account. You'll have to start reconciling tax-free, taxable and preservation components and try to fix them. Um, 360, you never get out of balance. All the, all the logic is totally different. 
Uh, yeah, so that's um, the PDF was just the last bit where we're converting over 60 different bank statements. We've certainly focused on a lot of the credit unions that we can't get feeds for, and we can convert those PDFs into digital transactions. So that video, I'll just play it again. You'll see it. Um, convert in our data entry screen a PDF, it can be an image or a PDF, um, into a um, working uh, bank feed, if you like. So that's what we're focused on. Where we want to head, that's where it can support 60 bank statements at the moment. You'll see it there converting it um, into transactions. Where machine learning's really advanced is in reading tables. Um, that's where um, it's moving OCR and tables and machine learning um, together and we're using a lot of cutting edge technology to make it much more accurate. So that's where we're at at the moment, converting bank statements, but we want to be able to convert any sort of SMSF document and file it into work papers. At the moment, any other non-bank statement, we are just in the early stages of exploring and trying to categorise them. Uh, at this stage, most of the interest is in bank statements. So that's why we've used the machine learning in that space. Hopefully that answers your questions. Um, looks like we've got through them, Pabs. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much for your help today, Pablo. I hope clients have enjoyed it. Uh, uh, we'll certainly uh, share a copy of this webinar if you're interested. Um, uh, we can make that available on our websites uh, where we run all the webinars and have them just type in bglcorp.com.webinars. Uh, and as Pablo mentioned, we are continuing to run webinars on different areas of 360 um, and deep diving into some of the aspects that we probably don't have enough time to cover today. Mm -hmm. Just one um, additional question there from Jeff. Um, if we are able to read transactional list, from a, from a bank? Um, it's, certainly, if, if you're talking a CSV export, um, yes, you can just paste any CSV export directly into the software, Jeff. Um, in that data entry screen, it can handle three column, four column, debits and credits all in the same column. It can handle all the date formats. So it can certainly handle a, any sort of CSV, you know, QuickBooks file in there. Um, and certainly, yeah, if you download the PDF, if you're talking more the PDF, then yes, uh, that PDF we should be able to read. If we can't, you know, if you want it, uh, if you want us to read, you know, maybe there's one of the 60 types that we haven't supported, send it through to us um, and we will start trying to learn how to read it um, is really the ultimate answer. We're, we're adding about two or three bank statements um, a week. Um, different types, so I don't envisage, um, there's nothing, you know, we've, we've seen some pretty tricky ones, Jeff, uh, with Merry Christmas messages on them and handwritten scribble on top of them uh, that we've still been able to convert. So um, yeah, set us the challenge. I think that's it, perhaps. Uh, we might finish it there. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks for listening to us today. Thank you, guys. Um, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a safe day.